What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the April 22nd, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Biden set to block millions of acres in Alaska from oil, gas, drilling in Earth Day action. Done, done, done. That's the big, kind of the big story of the weekend. Next up, three offshore wind projects nixed in New York. Back over to the Biden administration. They are considering scrapping its cutting-edge proposal to slash power plant pollution. Very interesting article. Um, next up, former UN staffer offers view on why sanctions on Moscow failed. Super interesting breakdown there. And then we'll end this first news segment with Oman LNG signing a 10-year gas supply agreement with Turkey's Botas Petroleum. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets over the weekend and mainly talk a little bit about what we might see in this upcoming week. We will cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. Um, as always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off. Let's do this. Hey, happy Earth Day, Michael. Uh, yes, let's happy Mar Earth Day. Oh, my goodness. Biden is ready to try to appease somebody since I believe he was raised by the Puerto Ricans in a Honduras factory where his uncle was eaten by a cannibal. I don't know what to even where to start with uh, Earth Day. This is where he's starting. Biden is set to block millions of acres in Alaska from oil from drilling in Earth Day action. This has second order and third order magnitude and is unbelievable. Quote, unquote. Listen to this, Michael. With climate change warming in the Arctic more than twice as the rest of the planet, we must do everything within our power to control the meat, the highest standards of care to protect this fragile ecosystem, says Interior uh, Secretary uh, Hablin, uh, as previously said, President Biden is delivering the most ambitious climate and conservative con uh, conservation agenda in history. This is hogwash. Um, the climate is not having a serious issue in the Arctic. Uh, I've talked to a few folks on this. Uh, even some penguins called up. Just kidding. But the regulations have received support from Democrats and the environmentalists. This is not a environmental move. This is a placation or how do you want a, a placeholder for his activists um yeah it's really not it's nothing more than a gonna hurt the oil and gas and it's gonna hurt alaska oh it is because alaska's one of the few states talk about universal basic income they have a little bit of U ubi specifically because of so much excess oil and gas going on there yeah i mean I find it interesting when you're right. This 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 looks exactly like an activist push towards the end of the campaign to rile up the other side because you've got, you know, both senators, they are Republicans, but also Democratic representatives who sent a letter early this February. And this is I'm reading now from the bottom of the article um, urging to consider the perspectives of native Alaskans, many of whom who support oil and gas development in the NPR, which is the National Petroleum Reserve. Now, there is a carve out for the Willow Project. So that's still that ConocoPhillips project is still but, moving forward. But it doesn't that down to less than a fourth of what it was. Yeah, it's it, point of matters. It doesn't touch what was already pre-approved. But this is a, a, a great example of how they're not really looking out for the best energy development They're they're looking to score political points and this is an easy way to probably kick the can down the road if they win they'll repeal it if they lose trump will repeal it so do i think this will actually end up this way no this is as you said just kind of a carrot in front of the camera that's right it's kind of like look i'm trying to be climate warming and hey as a shout out uh, we will have been filmed uh, here at eight o'clock on Monday morning, climate um, Earth Day uh, celebration with David Blackman, Irina Slav and Tammy Nemeth and me. So this will be covered on that as well. Nice, nice. Hey, Michael, let's go to the next one. Uh, three offshore wind projects next in New York. That's a total of six that were canceled. 
Michael, three were rebid out at double the price. So I went to OSU, but is the same amount of money being stolen from the people? I'm just kidding. No, three wind offshore nicks. Uh, and this is kind of funny. Uh, the New York heavy blow to the offshore in a major setback for the climate ambitions. These projects would have delivered four gigawatts to offshore wind, amounting to the most of the New York's 2035 goal. Um, it's all about cost. Given these developments, there's no final awards will be made. Um, are, are the uh, the news, blah, 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 Kathy Hogle is all upset. Well, well what it comes quote. down to is really what happened here was they couldn't come, the 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 maker of these turbines decided not to big a tur a, build a big enough turbine to fit what the you know, the, the retrofit what these offshore wind farms was going to do. So instead, you would have to use smaller turbines, which means more of them, which means more expense. And like everything, when you try something new, wind energy is fairly new. It's only been around for 10 years. We've been developing oil and gas for over 100 years now. Things always in the front end cost more. It's why investing in hardware. I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, the All In podcast. These guys were talking about this little uh, uh, X Apple, this this new company right now that raised 250 million dollars to build a little pin. It's their version of Google Glass, but it's on your pin. No 250 way. million dollars. They built a product that didn't work. Why? Investing in hardware costs so much money. So to think that we're just going to come into this in the first try, get it right, is ridiculous. It applies to anything. So um, that's why you're seeing all these cost overruns. It's absolutely insane. Well, and what's going to happen is, uh, the, as I've talked about with several different other folks on podcasts, the cost overruns have now caught up to them. And you've mentioned this before is that the wind industry is now catching up that they can't constantly go get more money, constantly go get more money. And it's now to a serious point. GE uh, Vernova is the uh, spinoff that you were talking about. Okay. Yeah. This, and, and I mean, but to give you an idea, this was originally going to supply power to, to 10 million homes by 2030, whether or not you believe that number or not. I mean, that's a, pretty lofty goal uh, it's extremely lofty but the part of the problem is that uh, we won't have any whale population by then <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> you, that's perfect okay, that made your day hey it's celebration earth day let's get rid of the, the whales exactly they're killing the environment that's right all right hey let's go to biden administration consider scrapping its cutting edge proposal to slash power plant pollution David Blackman has been all over this uh, whole topic uh, very well. And Michael, this article actually came from CNN. That's why when I was reading this, I was kind of like going, huh, even CNN is out there going, the uh, is the scrapping, it's really, really most impactful power plant rules uh, are important. The EPA is going after them because... They've got hydrogen buried into the language as well so that they can use hydrogen along with the coal. And now there are lawsuits coming out saying that hydrogen is more polluting than what is uh, allowed out there. So they're trying to separate it out a little bit and slow it down. Hydrogen is not as clean as they say it is. So they're trying to allow a little bit of two-year fudge room so that they can extend some of the uh, coal plants out two years, which is actually brilliant. Yeah, I mean, hydrogen is not here yet, it's clear. Hydrogen oh, no. is not ready to be injected into my car. I'm not sure if I want to be putting hydrogen into my car and turning it into a nuclear weapon, but that's just me, okay? Well, the the rule, this whole the, these rules are all about carbon capture and stemming, and I agree that if you could do carbon cleaning or carbon scrubbing, you could get it down to enough so that it would be less impact on the environment to run a coal plant than to run a wind mill, a wind turbine, just by doing scrubbing. You don't even have to do the carbon capture. So the EPA is uh, delay the rulemaking uh, on the existing plants, which have been covered 
Uh, here is a quote from O'Boyle. One thing we can all count on is the EPA will be sued by aggressive party under this rule, no matter what. <laughs> there will be lawsuits. So I have to hand it to the Biden administration for at least stepping back, taking a cup of tea, holding their their pinky out like they're English and going, um, we're going to get sued. Let's at least take a look at a rule. This is the first time I've heard that in years, Michael. I was pretty pleased. I mean, we've had scrubbers around for years, though. So the fact that like people are resistant to, oh, maybe we shouldn't try to make them better is is kind of crazy. But you did a great job. What's next? Uh, hey, Michael, uh, the former U.N. staffer offered his view on why sanctions on Moscow fa failed. This is really, really funny. Do you know why they failed, Michael? No, that's why we're about to read this article. Yeah, yeah. They got ahead. They got ready beforehand. <laughs> they learned from Iran. That's not what's in the article. We beat the snot out of Iran for years that you and I have talked about for years. Iran goes, hey, Putin, here's how you do it. And then Putin called them up and said, hey, here's how we did it. Now, listen to this. In its latest economic outlook, World Economic Outlook, published Tuesday by the IMF, projected that Russia's economy would grow 3.2% in 2024, expecting the forecasted growth rates for the U.S., U.K., Germany, and France. <laughs> wow. Now, they did that because of, you're going to get, you're going to throw up the dark fleet, Iran telling them how they beat all the sanctions, and then Putin going, hey, Here's what, uh, some other things. Oil is the number one way to do it. And this dovetails into now LNG is coming around the corner as also being able to avoid this. One of the key paragraphs in this article is in the bottom one, Michael. India has repeatedly stressed its resolve to maintain strong ties with Moscow despite Western objections, including criticisms of India's purchase of oil, uh, Russian oil. This is important because we are losing our allies. India, Japan, Asia, all of these are happening because we have weaponized oil. And the, anybody that we sanction, we are gearing up on more sanctions than Iran, but yet we've given them a hundred billion dollars. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I do find it super, super fascinating, um, you know, that they obviously that they knew it was coming. I mean, obviously, maybe to someone like like you, that makes sense. But what what's interesting is that this article clearly points out that without India and China, none of this bypassing of sanctions would be possible. So it it, it is you know, it shows it can be done. And I love the stat that you brought up that um, the Russian economy is growing 3.2%, which is more than the US, UK, Germany, and Russia. That's funny. It, it is. But uh, Russia is, it was several years ago, energy exports. Listen to this. This is critical. Energy exports for Russia was about 35% of their GDP. And then the, that the, that was with nat, uh, natural gas pipelines. After sanctions, it has increased with the Nord Stream being blown up. It is now at 37 to 39 percent GDP. Wow. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Speaking of LNG, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Oman LNG signs a 10-year gas supply agreement with Turkey's Botas Petroleum. Michael, this is critical because it dovetails into the previous discussion, mm -hmm. and that is with Oman LNG announced Friday uh, that Turkey's Botas Petroleum will supply, Michael, 1 million metric tons per, an, uh, per year of LNG for 10 years. This is huge. Mm -hmm. This is also a subcontract away around sanctions. Turkey, and there is a map that I'm going to um, take a look at. You take a look at Turkey's key infrastructure pipelines that are now in place. It now has its LNG import facility. You can now get into 
a lot of areas and get Russian LNG gas through this agreement through Oman. Oman and Russia have agreements. Oh. Mm. Yeah, this no, is, this is, ooh. I mean, LNG is becoming the big leverage point around the world. We've seen this is the latest in a string of LNG agreements that Qatar has done, Saudi Arabia has done. So th th there's a continuing reliance. And, and if here at home, we have an export ban. If not, and not an export ban, but we have a ban on building new facilities. If the world is going in the opposite direction, if the world is zigging, we're zagging. And I like that. I love a good zig when you're zag when someone else is zagging. But I actually think in this case, the world is right and we're gone wrong. It's gonna, it's gonna really set the world back. I mean, the U.S. back hugely. I just found this very. Uh, all of these threads go together because last week we talked about Turkey becoming the the you know, energy thread is big because last week we talked about Turkey becoming the natural gas hub. This week, this comes out. I mean, it's all in threaded in with all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. It also means that Russia is now <laughs> has a better GDP growth than the U.S. Yeah, very interesting. It's it's oh my gosh. Welcome to Earth Day. Earth Day 2024. <laughs> what else you got? Um I'm ready to hit the bar already. Yeah, no kidding. Well, we'll we'll quickly cover what went on in the oil and gas markets, but first we got to pay the bills here, guys. As always, thank you for checking out www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. All the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by that website. We appreciate everybody um, who's reached out. Uh, Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business, hit the description below. You can see all the timestamps, links to the articles. And um, you can also check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your data news combo. Got a lot of really cool stuff coming along with that. So please, please, please check us out there. I mean... This weekend was really quiet, Sue, but I really want to go back to, you know, we're, we're off on Friday, but Friday was really when we saw uh, the Israel response to Iran's drone attack. And we wow. saw in the morning, we saw prices fly up from around $82 to just above, to just below, excuse me, $86 even in what I thought was going to be a continued, and I think what a lot of people thought was a continued going to be run up. Instead, sentiment completely turns on the other side. Oil goes ahead and drops well below $82 until rebounding to its basic current position um, where it stands here as we, we actually record this Sunday night um, at about 82.11 with markets set to open here shortly. First off, I wanna, I'm going to move it back, Stu. Obviously, oil this the move in oil price was a showed that the market did not think whatever Israel did was too crazy of a extraordinary response or was crazy enough because what this would show is nothing really happened. It was up, then it was down. Talk us through what actually happened between Israel and Iran, because I think that's going to give us a better sentiment or a better feel of what this crazy price action really happened. Did. Um, the Iran uh telegraphed and says oh we're going to respond they did the u.s intercepted 75 of the ballpark 325 uh, missiles that were thrown at it the iron the israeli iron dome got one percent uh, of the missiles got through one child was hurt two iranians were hurt in iran when a a missile misfired in, in Iran and blew up. So the only Iranians in the strike against Israel uh, in retaliation, two Iranians killed from a misfire. I, Israel attacked and everybody was worried, are they going to attack the uh, uh, Iranian oil uh, infrastructure, which, Michael, they are doing about 400, uh, 4.5, 5 million barrels per day, uh, 4 million barrels per day 
production in Iran? Are they going to take that out? Well, are they going to take out their nuclear facilities? Are they going to take out, you know, there are about four main targets. Turns out Isra uh, Israel did do an attack and they attacked their nuclear capabilities on their, their stuff. I have not seen a damage report like I would be expecting. So it's kind of like everybody's telegraphed attacks and it's kind of like, two dogs that open the gate and start yelling at each other and then the gate closes and then they really i don't know what's going on dude one or two things have been hit and they've yep. been nuclear and that's it i mean when you hear the word nuclear it scares me that's why i wanted you to kind of give a quick overview because you're right and, from from an oil price perspective nothing really happened overall markets didn't do much better on friday we saw the s p 500 drop about eight tenths of a percentage point nasdaq down over 2.2.05 percentage points mainly because tesla had to recall all of their cyber trucks because of a pedal issue so that's really dragging down um that i saw that exxon mobile and tesla now have the same market cap oh how the turn tables Ooh. have come isn't that wild very wild very wild um 10-year yields fall uh two tenths of a percentage point two-year yields stay Pretty steady. As I mentioned, crude oil um, sitting just above $82. Brent oil, 87 to 31 Price action you know, looks to be a little bit soft here as the markets are about to open. So we will cover, uh, get you covered um, on Tuesday exactly um, what happened. I mean, Stu, I, it was pretty quiet from an oil price, uh, from an oil market standpoint, other than kind of just the, the crazy price action. What else should people be worried about coming up this week? You know, I used to think I'd have an idea, but... Uh, I did not have Biden's uncle getting eaten by cannibals on my squirt, my bingo card this week. So anything's wide open, dude. Yeah, no, absolutely <laughs> crazy. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, with that, we'll let you get out of here. Get back to work. Appreciate everybody checking us out. Energy News Beat podcast, world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.